Well, anyway, I just feel the Lord now. So let's just stand and let's just invite His presence tonight and pray that God would dispatch His ministering angels tonight. Amen. They would, he would send His mighty messengers tonight that He would just bless this service and join our hearts with unity and harmony tonight as we expect and healing. Lord, bringing, bringing deliverance tonight, God. Father, I'm praying for the wisdom of God. I'm praying for the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, that you will direct us and orchestrate everything that we do. Lord, let every song, Lord, that is sang tonight, God, let it uplift you tonight, God, and bless you. Lord, let it bring encouragement to the saints tonight, God. Father, I pray for healing. Lord, I pray for deliverances. I pray for breakthroughs in this place tonight. Lord, every heart, Lord, every request that's been given in tonight, God. Father, I am praying for results. Lord, I am believing for a good report tonight. God, I am believing for the Holy Ghost to move in a mighty way and shake up, Lord, and stir up tonight, God. Lord, and waken up tonight, Lord, that you will bring us together, Lord, with a unity and a harmony tonight, God, that's going to shake the very gates of hell. Lord, I am believing, Lord, that we are a mighty army that's on the move that is moving forward. Father, I just praise you and I love you tonight and I thank you for the victory. Lord, as we welcome you here tonight in Jesus' holy name, amen, amen, and amen. Now, folks, if we're going to pray right now, I want to hear some praying going on. <laughs> I want to hear some people praying and lifting up your voices tonight. I know God is not deaf, but neither is the devil. The devil needs to hear us being prayer warriors, lifting up our voices, crying out to God. Amen. I ain't ever going to leave again. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Amen. Let's get into some worship service that I want to start out with singing. Hark, the herald angels sing. Amen. Don't you know they sang that day when the birth of Christ happened? Amen. Hark, the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Glory, nations rise, join the triumph of the sky, with angelic hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Gracious bond of earth and sky. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. To give them second birth, hail the heaven, priests of peace, hail the Son of righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Hark, the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn King. Can we just lift our hands right now and just say glory to the newborn King tonight? Let's just praise Him and adore Him and lift up the mighty name of Jesus tonight. Father, we recognize, Lord, we recognize that the King of all kings, Lord, the Lord of all lords, the God of all gods, Lord, was born. Lord, and this is the season, Lord, that we're going to celebrate. Lord, this is the season, Lord, that the risen Savior, Lord, has come in a mighty way. Father, we celebrate you. Now, God, we celebrate your birth. Lord, we celebrate, God, when there was a time, Lord, that you brought earth and sky together. Lord, that you reconciled. Lord, you reconciled. Father, I thank you tonight for the work that you have done. Lord, and we praise you and we magnify you tonight in Jesus' holy, holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Let's sing Standing on the Promises tonight. Stand, how many standing on them promises? It's already been given to you. You just got to believe that they're coming your direction. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Standing on the promises of Christ, my King. 
Through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout sing. Oh, standing on the promises of God. Well, I'm standing, yes, yeah, standing. Oh, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Well, I'm standing on the promises that cannot fail. In the howling storms of doubt and fear us help. By the living word of God I shall prevail. Oh, standing on the promises of God. Well, I'm standing, yes, yeah, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises I now can see. Perfect present cleansing in the blood for me. Standing in the liberty where Christ makes free. Oh, standing on the promises of God. Well, I'm standing, yes, I'm standing. Oh, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, yes, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Well, I'm standing on the promises of Christ my Lord. Bound to Him eternally by love strong. Coming daily with the Spirit soul. We're standing on the promises of God. Well, I'm standing. Yes, I'm standing. Promises of God, my Savior, standing. Yes, I'm standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Well, I'm standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all, well, I'm standing on the promises of God. Well, I'm standing, yes, I'm standing. Oh, I'm standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, yes, I'm standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Do you reckon old John Hood knew that we're still going to be singing this song that he wrote back in 1885? Wow. We're going to get to meet him one of these days. Say, John, we're still standing. Amen. We're still standing. Let's sing Joy Unspeakable. How many has got joy unspeakable tonight? <clears throat> just got joy just oozing out all over you. Praise God because the joy is inside you tonight. Real joy. Real, the world don't have this kind of joy like we got tonight, can't folks. Take it away. I said the world don't have the kind of joy I got tonight. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I have found His grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free. Yes, free. Glory, it is joy unspeakable and full. 
sing it tonight, church. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the hand has never yet been tossed. Sure to sing it tonight. Oh, I have found a joy no tongue can tell how its waves of glory What a wondrous blessing. I, anybody say it tonight? Full gulf. Oh, somebody to celebrate tonight. Well, it is joy unspeakable. Woo, praise God. Praise God you're saved tonight. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the Sing verse 2 one more time. Sing with me tonight. Oh, I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. Oh, what a wondrous blessing I am saved from the awful my, my, my. Hallelujah. Thank God. It is joy. Glory to God. Shalabaho na kalabasa. Woo, ma, ma, ma. Sing it, church. Sing it tonight. Let the joy of the Lord tonight be your strength. Woo, my Lord, woman. Hallelujah. It is joy unspeakable. Ma, sing it tonight, church. Give let the Lord bless you with joy. Real full of glory, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the hat. Oh, we're gonna sing it one more time. Let God just be with you. Well, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, full of glory, full of glory, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory all oh, the hat has never yet been told <laughs> Ooh, my, 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 my. my 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 you ought to be overflowing with joy of the lord tonight the joy of the lord is your strength tonight my lord my lord i found a hope you ought to be praising god for the joy the hope that you found in him tonight you can praise him in a joy no tongue can tell, folks. Whoo, you may be seated tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. What a wonderful time. Wonderful time. The joy of the Lord tonight that he brings into our lives. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Well, let's go ahead and take up our Wednesday night tithes and offering. We could have our ushers come on down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's going to be a... An exciting month, folks. December is almost here. It's going to be an exciting month for us around here. We got Sunday morning. We want, we want you to wear your Yale Assembly T-shirt Sunday morning. Oh, yeah. Amen. I don't care how cold it is outside. It's going to be Yale Assembly Sunday. Amen. Yeah. So wear your Assembly, uh, assembly T-shirt. Go ahead, Brother Troy, then I'll finish these announcements. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>
Amen. So come Sunday morning, come expecting and come believing for a great move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then uh, Sunday night, we're going to have a good old-fashioned water baptism service. Hey, hallelujah. We got some participants wanting to get water baptized. And so Sunday night, so if you know somebody, spread the word, tell the news. Sunday night, we're going to hear the water splash. Hallelujah. We're going to leave it cold. Hey, <laughs> we're going to make them shout hallelujah for sure. <laughs> So Sunday night, water baptism. We got food bank on December the 10th, uh, December the 15th. Uh, that is going to be, an, it says here that the women's and girls' lunch is going to, that's going to be, de, be, be uh, postponed because we have got the, what is it, Claire? Varnell Family Christmas Reunion going on. So that will be December the 15th out here. at going to have a noon meal, so that's what's going to go on. So we appreciate that family getting together. On December the 16th, we're going to have a Christmas dinner, praise God, from my house to your house. And so come on out for Christmas dinner at 5 p.m. Then there's going to be a Christmas program that night at following around 6 o'clock. So be sure to invite somebody out. Amen. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time of, uh, of happenings around here. It's going to be a wonderful time. And so anyway, thank you all to those who have been a part of the Angel Tree program and so, anyway, many blessings upon you and all that good stuff. So, anyway, a lot of good things. Thank you to all that's helped decorate the church for Christmas. Looks nice out here. Looks Christmassy, festive. <laughs> Praise God. Folks, this is, this is the Christian's holiday. Amen. And so, we're going to celebrate it. And so, tell folks Merry Christmas. Tell them. Tell them Merry Christmas. Praise God. And let's rejoice in the goodness of our God, the goodness of our Savior tonight. Good to have Sonia with us tonight. I didn't want to miss her, but good to have Sonia with us tonight. Amen. Appreciate her being here with us tonight. All the home folk tonight do love you, appreciate you. We're going to make it, folks. We're going to make it tonight. And so, uh, anyway, any announcements I might have missed tonight or any testimony? How about three good quick testimonies of the goodness of the Lord? How he's blessed you, kept you, promoted you. Anybody else tonight? So good, amen. Amen. If somebody else, I don't want to miss nobody. Wonderful being a caregiver. Being a caregiver. Amen. You got a song for me tonight, guys? Play me something. Sing me something while I transition. Josh, can you turn this mic down just a little bit, please? Thank you. I want to 
gonna throw in throw in a new one on you guys. I don't know if you'll recognize it or not, but I'm gonna throw in a new one on you. See if you can see if you can figure it out. What night up on the sea A ship was tossing to and fro Breakers dash of every hand Angry winds around it blow sails with me. Aren't you glad you're not alone tonight, folks? You're not on this journey alone. You've got the faithful Savior walking with you. You've got the comforter, the healer tonight that is walking with you. Praise God. Slap your neighbor and tell them, give them a high five and say, I'm so glad you're here tonight. Praise. If you got your Bible, turn with me to the book of Jude. The book of Jude tonight. <clears throat> Jude chapter 1. Oh, red. Praise the Lord. Pray Jude chapter 1 tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be back with you. Missed you guys. Missed you, missed you. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful evening tonight, Lord, that you have already ordained. Father, we just come tonight, God, Lord, to, Lord, to sense your presence, to feel your presence, Lord. I pray tonight in the holy name of Jesus, Lord, that the real preacher, the real teacher would show up tonight. Lord, move in me and through me tonight. God, quicken my spirit, my mind, my heart tonight. God, let our hearts receive. Lord, let us receive from you tonight, Lord. We receive instruction and in righteousness, Lord. I pray, let your Holy Spirit, Lord, give us a teaching tonight. 
God, that's going to change our lives. It's going to change our way of thinking tonight, God. Father, I pray, open the scriptures tonight. Lord, let them burn within our hearts. Father, quicken us tonight. Father, we thank you and we love you for all your goodness tonight. We ask it all in Jesus' wonderful name. And the whole church said amen. Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1. Let's go down and pick it up. Uh, let's go down to verse 6. Let's start up in verse 6 tonight. <clears throat> We've been talking about angels, and so we're going to carry that on tonight. It says, and the angels, this was the angels that fell. How many fell with Satan? One third. One third rebelled against Satan. That means they have a will. They made a choice. They made a decision to rebel against God. So they have a will. So one third of the angels which kept not their first estate. They had a proper domain in heaven. God had a special place for them. But they gave it all up to follow Lucifer. And to be cast out down to the earth. Or later, and later to be reserved into the gate. Or to uh, the lake of fire for eternity. That's where rebellion is going to get people to rebel against God, is the lake of fire of the second death. Somebody say amen. amen. Folks don't like to hear it. It offends people, but that's the word of God. It is truth tonight. And so I like what our guy said today. He said, Christians do not commit fornication. Amen. He said, Pentecostals, Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians commit fornication. He said, but Christians do not commit fornication difference in it folks we're not just a name on the door we are christians we're god fearing god believing god honoring god serving christians amen (laughs) and so that's what we are tonight (coughs) excuse me so we see here it says this right of the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. I want to stop right there. I want to ask you a question. He says, <coughs> He hath reserved in everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Has all the fallen angels, is all of them in chains? The answer is no. Some are still loose. That's why you have so many oppositions against you. You have a lot of enemies of darkness. You have a lot of demons that attack people and so forth and so on. So not all of them are bound. There are demons that are loosed, that are running around, causing havoc, causing dismay, different things that's going on. And so we see this right here. But look at verse 7. He said, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's where your other ones are. They're running around committing fornication, giving themselves over that to that. So we see here the two types of angels. Some are reserved, some are they went after strange flesh. You go back in Genesis, the sixth chapter, you'll find that's why the flood came. And so anyway, that's a whole other story, a whole other topic. Not, I, I want to go a completely different direction than that tonight, so I, I'll save that for another time. But skip down to verse number 8, and it says this right. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise the men, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring... Durst not bring against him a railing accusation but said the lord rebuke thee the lord rebuke thee now upon looking at this we've read this many times you probably read it many times we just kind of glanced over it but when i started studying about this and finding this and researching this this really began to stand out to me And so, let's look at first here that Michael, the archangel, was contending with the devil. Michael is not the only one that contends with him. He was contending with him at the particular point about Moses' body. So you've got to understand that Satan was the one who owned death. 
But remember, Jesus is the one that took back the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He had no more say-so, praise God. But you can look at it, go back in Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. You can research that story out as well. But I'm not going to go there either. <laughs> We're going to go somewhere tonight. I want to help you. I want to help you tonight. I want to focus in down this to the Lord rebuke. If you also, if you'll go to uh, uh, Zechariah, go over in the Old Testament, along about the third chapter, you'll find this same phrase written again <clears throat> in verse 1. Zechariah chapter 3, verse number 1. If you're looking for it, go to Haggai and turn, left, turn right and you'll come right to it. Zechariah, the third chapter, verse 1, he said, And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Satan standing to accuse. Satan is standing there to uh, uh, oppose. That's his job, right? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy it is his job to hinder your work, to hinder your progression, to try to rob you, to try to sift you as wheat. He tries everything he can to destroy you, to keep you from furthering and serving God and reaching other people for the glory of God. So we see right here, he says that the Satan is standing at the right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem, that means he has set his righteousness upon Israel. He said, he's the one that rebukes thee. He says, is not this a brand that is plucked out of the fire? That means that God has acquitted and God has pardoned. Amen. Aren't you glad tonight that God has plucked you and pulled you out of the fire tonight? He has abundantly pardoned you and acquitted you and no longer condemned you. You're no longer held blameless tonight, but you are been pardoned by the grace of God. He says in verse number 3, Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments, which signifies sin, and stood before the angel in verse number 4. And he answered and spake unto these, those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. Somebody say, that is justification. Whoo, my, that's what happened to you folks. You, co you uh, came to Christ. You had filthy garments of sin. You had reproach. You had guiltiness. You had the stench of death upon you. But God said, take away those filthy garments, and I'm going to clothe you with a robe of righteousness. I'm going to kill the fatted calf. I'm going to put a roll ring on your finger. I'm going to shod you with the best pair of sandals I got. I'm going to put a robe on you tonight. Amen. He brought you out of that. He ca caused you no longer condemned, not guilty tonight. He said, I have reproved thee. He said, I have brought you out and I have given you my glory. He said, you're now spotless because you have been redeemed. Because I see you through my blood now. I see you spotless and clean. Whoo, that'll make you shout tonight, folks. Thank God I've been redeemed. Thank God that I got salvation. Thank God I got good religion now, folks. Hallelujah. And he said in verse 5, And I said, Let them set a, fa a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head, and they clothed him with garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested. That word protested means affirm. It means affirm. Unto Joshua saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house, thou shalt keep my court, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Wow. I want to stop right there just for a moment tonight, and I want to look. And I, if I had a title for this, I wrote this down. I'm in the family. What does that mean? I'm in the family. Because I'm in the family of God tonight, I have got all of, if I can find my notes here, I have, been, I have received all that has already been given unto me. Somebody say receive. It's already been done. 
at the cross 2,000 years ago when God defeated Satan, when he took the keys, at that moment he already opened up the portals of glory to give you anything and everything that you ever needed to win the battles of this life. Healing was there. Deliverance was there. Financial was there. Provision was there. Everything you ever need, everything you will ever need has already been provided for you. All you got to do is step up and start receiving it. Well, I, I'm just doing without. I, I just don't have it. Well, just start receiving it. And so I want to focus on because I'm in the family. Notice over here in Jude, when Michael said, the Lord rebuked thee. How come he said that? Just think about it, just for a second. How come Michael, the great archangel, said, the Lord rebuked thee? Very simple. He's not in the family. He's a created being. He's not a child of God. You're a child of God. I'm a child of God. But Michael is not. All the other angels are not in the family of God. Is that clear as mud to you yet? So what does that mean to you? What does that mean? Because you're in the family of God tonight, you have been given status. You have been given privileges. You have been given obligations. You have been given rights of inheritance. And in that rights and in that inheritance tonight, God has given you power of attorney to exercise and use his name in his absence. I don't have to say the Lord rebuke you. I can actually come out and say to now, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I think that so many of our churches and people in our churches, they are not doing that because they don't know that they can do that. I, I, I was visiting with a young lady this week and... Uh, <clears throat> She, she grew up Pentecostal. She grew up, matter of fact, she grew up in Assembly of God churches all of her life. And, and now she's gotten away from that and she's going to another church. And she said they no, longer, they no longer talk about the gifts of the Spirit. They no longer talk about speaking tongues. And there's no evidence of the Holy Spirit. But I like the church. <clears throat> and I thought to myself, if we start losing the Pentecost, if we start losing the biblical word of God... How are we ever going to overcome and start receiving the benefits and the status of what God has given us? People are going to be overrun. They're going to be overcome of the enemy because they don't know how to do spiritual warfare in their life. If they don't know how to pray in the Holy Ghost, if they don't know what it is to have experience the gift of faith or the gift of knowledge or the word of God or the word of knowledge or the word of faith or the working of miracles or the interpretation of things, how are we ever going to understand the working ministry of the cross of Calvary? The cross of Calvary is where our victory is. And God said, I have given you a status tonight. I have given you a privilege of being my children. And so when I look at this, go to with me to the book of Hebrews real quick. Hebrews, the, uh, I think it's the first chapter. Hebrews chapter 1. I want to go in a little bit more detail here. Hebrews chapter 1. I want to start laying some, uh, some scripture to back up what I've been saying here real quickly here. In, in Hebrews chapter 1, let's pick it up in verse number 4. 1 and 4. Hebrews 1 and 4. Being made so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. That's the name of Jesus right there. He says, For unto which of the angels said he at any time, I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Never had that ever been said. He never said to another angel, never said to an angel, Thou art my son. Only one. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. 
He says in verse number 6, And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he says, And let all the angels of God worship him. The angels are to worship him. They sit around the throne saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. They sing and they worship and they sing praises. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands and thousands of angels. They worship God in verse 7. And the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son, he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteous and innate hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. Hallelujah. That's the God we serve. Now, heaven and earth may pass away, but God's word will never pass. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He doesn't change. There's no variableness of his turning tonight, folks. He remains the same. They shall perish, but thou going to remain. They shall wax old and do the garment, and the vesture thou hast folded them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. My Lord, somebody get happy about Jesus tonight. We're serving a mighty God who is alive, who is reigning, who has authority, who has power. But he said in verse 13, But to which of the angels saith he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Never. Only Jesus has that, only Jesus has that position. Verse 14, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them, that's the Christian, that's the believers, the followers of God, the elect of God, who shall be heirs of salvation. That is the, that is the working of the angels is to come and minister to you as the elect children of God. How many how many's been asking God since we started this? Lord, dispatch angels in my direction. How many have been praying that? Amen. You ought to be praying that every day. Amen. I'm trying to help you here. Lord, dispatch your angels. Lord, send your ministering angels to my house, to my wife, to my family, to my kids at school. Lord, send them to my job. Lord, dispatch your angels around our church. Let them encamp round about us. Lord, I pray a hedge of angels round about me to protect me. Lord, I pray the angels is going to bring me in financial increase. Lord, I'm believing the angels are going to come and minister to my needs. If we're not praying that, we're missing out on a boatload of blessings. Amen. Shake your head like Pentecostal. Hey, I have status. I am royalty. I've got royal blood flowing through my veins. My Lord. I'm going somewhere. Go to Ephesians. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Got to get a hold of this church. Get a hold of this tonight. This is going to change your life. If you'll let it, it'll change your life. Glory to God. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20. I go to 19. He said, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward? Who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power, you are to underline that tonight. That's where Jesus sits. That's where Jesus reigns from. Is far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that age of which is to come. You serve a mighty big God tonight who is in all, above all, and through all tonight. 
Look at where he's seated in that. For there is no chair in the holies of holies, in the temple in the Old Testament. But now because Jesus has become our great high priest, there is a chair in heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father tonight. And he reigns with authority. And he reigns with power. And he reigns with might tonight. And at your beckoning need and your call, he is able to dispatch angels to come to your rescue and to provide your needs. And when the enemies come in like a flood, you can raise up a stand against him. And you don't have to say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you, because that's when you step up and you say, Satan, get thee behind me in the name of Jesus. Why? Why can I say that? Because it says right here in chapter 2, verse number 5, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, and it is by grace that you are saved, and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. Folks, I'm going to tell you, you are seated with Christ Jesus tonight. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. You have the same power, the same anointing that Raise Christ from the dead. He dwells in you tonight. Amen. And you have the right to exercise that name. Exercise that power. Exercise that tonight in Jesus' name. Why? Because you're in the family. You've been blood bought. You've been redeemed. You've been set free. You've been forgiven. And you've been raised up. There's never an angel ever happened to that. No other angel has that ever happened to. And ain't going to because that's not their destination. Your destination was that you be redeemed and restored and reconciled back to the Father through Christ. When he was seated at the right hand of the Father, you were seated with him. You need to see yourself seated in that place of authority and dominion tonight. What did he tell Adam? He said, I want you to go and I want you to subdue the earth. I want you to go and take dominion over every creeping thing, over all the fowl there. I want you to go and take dominion. My, it was the second Adam that did it because the first Adam couldn't do it or didn't do it. But our second Adam did it. Glory to God. And because he did it, you are reigning with Christ tonight. When you look at this, we talk about in the family with God, in God's family tonight. God has give go to Matthew now. Go to Matthew the 16th chapter. Matthew the 16th chapter. I want you to look at this. Matthew 16 uh, verse uh, uh, 19. Matthew 16:19. This is right after Peter was talking with Christ and he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That'll make you shout right there. Amen. They shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. I don't care what hell does. He can't prevail against the work of God. Woo-wee. Verse 19. And I will give unto... He didn't say angels there, folks. I will give you the church. I will give you the elect. I will give you the redeemed. I will give you the saved. Anywhere you want to be called there. I will give unto you what? The keys. The keys. Somebody say, he'd give me the keys. He'd give you the keys of what? The kingdom. My Lord. Well... I'm just having a hard time. I'm just having a hard time. Well, then take the keys out of your pocket and start doing something with them. Take the keys out of your purse. Take the keys out of your lockup box and start using the keys. That has... I just can't make it. Well, get the keys out and start using it. Start putting them in some door locks and start opening some doors that God wants to open in your life. Woo, don't get me start preaching tonight. I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever. Well, I know I, I'm going I'm to stay with this right here. And so many times we focus on this little area. We say, well, Lord, I know I'm saved. But we run around sick. We run around with lack. Let me tell you, these keys and whatsoever represents not only this, but it represents this, and it represents this, and it represents this, and it represents this. 
whatsoever is coming against you, whatever is trying to come against you to oppose you, trying to resist you, that Satan is trying to accuse you of tonight, whatsoever thou shalt bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou or you loose on the earth shall be loosed in heaven. Honey, God has given you a yes and no ministry. What does that mean? It means you have the power through the name of Jesus now that you can say yes to healing. You can say yes to breakthrough. You can say yes to you can say yes to blessing. You can say yes to financial increase. You can say no to disease. You can say no to sickness. You can say no to like are you anybody here helping me tonight? God has given you a ministry that you can say yes and no to. This has been given to us. It's not been given to the angels. Michael the archangel can't do this. But you can. Because you've been blood bought, you've been redeemed, and you've brought, been brought into the family of God. You can say no to disease, no to sickness, no to poverty, no to lack. At least shake in like Pentecostal. Just shake it. <laughs> Glory. And if it was, well, well, Pastor, you're going to have to prove it more than that. Okay. Go to uh, Matthew, the 18th chapter. Matthew 18, 19. I'll prove it again. Verily I say, this is Matthew 18, 18. Verily I say unto who? <laughs> you. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. See, God can't do it till you do it. God can't say yes until you say yes. He can't say no till you say no. Hello. He's just waiting on you to receive. Somebody say receive. Receive. He says, and again I say unto you that if two of you will agree on earth as touching anything and say that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. That's a yes and no ministry. It's a ministry of binding and loosing that God has given you as a child of God. I'm glad I don't have to pray. And ask Mary to ask Jesus to do something for me. Dear God. Dear God, help us. That we have access to the Father of all gods. That we have access to him through the Son of Jesus Christ. Amen. My Lord, that's enough to make you want to shout tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no other. There's nothing any better than Christianity. There's nothing, folks. There is nothing, nothing like being a Christian serving Christ Jesus. My Lord, I've got to hurry. Good night. Okay. The word rebuke. Write this down. You need to understand this. If you're going to, if you're going to start rebuking the devil, you need to know what you're doing. Right? Rebuke. Write it down. R-E-B-U-K-E. In the Greek. In the Greek. It means epitomeo. E-P-I-T-I-M-A-O. Just like it sounds. Epitomeo. That's in the Greek. It is broke up into two words. Epi. Epi means above and higher. You got it? It means above and higher. And tomeo means to judge. So, <clears throat> when you put it all together, it means this right here. That you have the ability to judge from a higher position or authority. My Lord. Write that down think about it. Because God has given you his name. You can judge from a higher place of authority and position. 
I read to you over in Hebrews a while ago that God has been given a name that's above every name. When you're in that name and you've been seated, I read to you in Ephesians, the third chapter, you have been seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You can use his name and when you use his name, you are literally judging and rebuking from a higher place of authority and dominion over the enemy. Glory. Folks, this is where we need to come in as the body of Christ. If we're going to do spiritual warfare, we need to know what we're doing. We need to start believing for God that he's going to say yes to financial blessings. He's going to say yes to, to, to rent money. He's going to say yes to healing of shoulders and cancer and brain tumors. He's going to say yes to healing of that. He's going to say yes to diabetes. He's going to say yes tonight, amen, to the healing of those. Well, I'm just going to live out the, the deck that's been dealt to me. Well, I'm telling you, folks, you can live it out if you want to, but I'm going to go by what's been dealt out to me. If you want to live in that kind of, kind of an atmosphere and just barely make it through life and struggle all your days, if you want to live in poverty, honey, I'm, that's your business now. But I've learned better and I know better and I'm believing for the ministering angels to come and be my messengers, to be my ministers tonight. And I'm believing that I can reign with Christ and I can judge from a higher position and a higher place of authority and I can rebuke the enemy, I can rebuke sickness, I can rebuke disease, I can lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Glory to God. I believe tonight in the absolute word of God and the authority that we have through the very name of Jesus Christ. That is where we stand tonight. It's nothing of our own tonight, but it's through the very name of Jesus Christ. Real quickly, go to Luke. Luke, the fourth chapter. I'll have to go through this real quick. Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke, the fourth chapter. Then we're going to have a little time of prayer meeting tonight because we're going to pray for some folks tonight. We're going to pray for some people. They're going to get healed in Jesus' name. Say, so, Pastor, on a Wednesday night? Yes, on a Wednesday night. Why not? We, believe, we need to start believing people are going to get healed on Wednesday nights. We need to start believing people are going to get baptized with the Holy Ghost on Wednesday nights. We need to start believing people are going to get saved on Wednesday nights. Well, we're going to have a Bible study. If we think like that, that's about all we're going to have. But if we come with a mentality of saying, Satan, we're going to the house of God tonight and we're going to believe for the glory of God to fall. We're going to believe for people to get saved tonight. Amen. My Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get me fired. That's what happened when I don't get to preaching three or four times. Luke, the fourth chapter. Luke 4 and 32. Follow along real quickly. And they were astonished at his doctrine. Whew. For his word was with power. Somebody say his word was power. Right here. Right here. Right here. His word is with power and authority. If you're going to fight the enemy, if you're going to rebuke Satan, if you're going to rebuke the enemy, do it with the scripture. Why? Because that's what Jesus did in Matthew, the fourth chapter. When Satan came again when he was fasting, he says, Satan, well, read it for yourself. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Verse 33. And in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil. There's never a clean devil. He's dirty. He's low down. He's rotten. He's stinking. He's a stupid goober tonight. Amen. He said, and they cried out with a loud voice. Verse 34. Saying, let us alone. I'm not going to leave them alone because they don't leave you alone. Amen. Well, Jesus, just let us alone. Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Remember what Peter and John said? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man immediately jumped up and started leaping and dancing and praising God and walked all the way into the temple, leaping and praising God. There's power and authority in the name and the scripture of the word of God. He said, verse 35, I like Jesus here. And Jesus what? Oh, Satan, get out of here. Satan, get out of here. Just go on. Leave me alone. Don't patty cake with the devil, folks. Jesus didn't play a game with him. With that old devil, he just been on my back. He's been on my back. It's just all over me this week. Well, quit telling him where you got your donkey tied up at. 
If you're tired of him getting your goat, if you're tired of him getting your donkey, then quit telling him what bothers you. Well, I just can't seem to get a breakthrough from this right here. The finances. You tell the devil, you give the devil enemy and resources where he knows where to attack you at. If you'd keep your mouth shut. <laughs> I won't say this, but you tell your neighbor, neighbor, just shut up. <laughs> if you keep your mouth shut and quit giving the devil his resources to fight you. All that in a bag of chips. Jesus said to Satan, he rebuked him and said, he said, son, hold your peace. He said, just shut your mouth and come out of him. That's how you do it, folks. Well, I, I'm not Jesus. You're right, but you're in Christ. Let me tell you, right here, right here, Jesus' ministries, up to the point he was 33 and a half years old, he did every miracle, he did everything as a son of man. Not the son of God, but as a son of man. With the help of the Holy Spirit. And you want to, and people want to go to a church and say, well, we just don't believe in the Holy Ghost. Or we don't exercise the gifts. We don't believe in the speaking in tongues. Wow. So, he says right here, Jesus said, rebuked him, saying, hold your peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him. That's the result Jesus was looking for. What result are you looking for? Huh? When you tell the devil, I rebuke you, what result are you looking for? Are you looking for healing? Are you looking for deliverance? Let me tell you, just because you may stop doing something doesn't mean you've been delivered from it. Well, I've got an addiction and I've not done it now in six months. Well, there's a lot of difference between not doing it and being delivered from it. Can I get an amen? amen. Jesus took authority. He broke the chain. Of, this man had a demonic, he was, he was demon-possessed. And Jesus walked up and took authority in the name of Jesus and used the scripture and said, Devil, come out of him! And the devil had, my Lord, and the devil had to obey. Amen. Let me tell you, when you use the name of Jesus, the devil has got to obey you. When you exercise that ministry of yes and no, and you exercise that ministry of binding and loose that God has given you tonight, whatever you command in the name of Jesus, the devil has got to buy me to tell you. Oh, glory. Where am I going to go? Go, 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 right, go, go, right, go right down, go, go right down here to verse 38. I got my, oh, glory. 38. And, and, and he rose out of the synagogue and entered into Satan, Simon's house, and Simon's wife, mother, had a great fever, and they besought him for her, and he stood over her, and he did what to the fever? He rebuked it. He rebuked it. And what happened? Glory. That was the result he was looking for. Well, Lord, let's all call a prayer meeting. We've got to pray for this thing. Not necessarily. It's good to pray. But there comes a time you just step up to the plate and you say, I rebuke you, fever, in the name of Jesus. I see. Let's see. Was there a prayer made here? Let's double check this. I don't want to miss anything. He stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and started ministering and serving unto them. Well, let's call an all-night prayer meeting. We've got to call an all-night. We've got to pray for this thing. It's time we step up to the plate, take the authority and the power, and learn what rebuke means, judging from a higher place of authority and declaring warfare upon diabetes and cancer. Come on, somebody, help me preach a little bit tonight and declare warfare over sickness and disease, over poverty, over lack. Why? Because a fever has an ear. Fever has an ear. It can hear. The demon had an ear because he told him to shut up, and he did. He told the fever, rebuke you, and the fever left. That's why I stress so much. If you're going to pray, let somebody hear you pray. If you're going to move your mouth, at least let something come out of it. 
Because what you're talking to has got an ear and they need to hear that you're talking to that mountain. Mountain, be thou removed and cast yonder into the sea. I've lost some of you because it's 8 o'clock and you're tired and you already want to go home. Jesus is the one that was asleep in the boat. And they said, Master, awake. And he woke up and he rebuked the waves, the wind. And what did they do? They obeyed him. The winds and the waves, they have ears. Folks, you need to tell them to rebuke them in the name of Jesus. And they got to do what you tell them to do in the name of Jesus. They've got ears. Fever has got an ear. Remember when Jesus was walking through the, walking through, I think it was, was it Bethany? Was it Bethany? And he was hungry. And he came to the fig tree. And he went to the fig tree and he found it with leaves on it but no fruit on it. He said, from this day forward, you will not bear any fruit. And it went to the very root and it dried up. If Peter and him come back the next day, they walked by the same fig tree. And Peter said, it's dried up from the root. Let me tell you, the fig tree has got ears and it had to do what Jesus commanded it to do. You've got some fig trees in your life. You've got some winds and waves in your life tonight. You've got some fevers in your life. You've got some mountains in your life tonight. But you've not been taking the authority and rebuking them in the name of Jesus. If we're going to get victory around here, either, either, there's two things. Either you're going to overcome or you will be overcome. That's it. Either you're going to have victory in your life or you're going to be walking in defeat. That's it. I don't know about you, but I want to walk in victory. I, because my Christ that died for me 2,000 years ago, he didn't, he didn't die on the cross and go through a horrendous death that he died for me to walk in defeat and walk in lack all of my life and walk around sick and poorly all the time. He wanted me to live in victory. He wanted me to be an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. Hallelujah! I want a testimony that I can tell somebody about the goodness of God, about how I've been healed of a fever, how I've been healed and delivered. Glory to God! You need a testimony of your very own tonight Whoa, don't use somebody else's testimony you need a testimony you need an experience of your own tonight that you can say this is what God done for me God wants us to have and know what it is to overcome we're walking this victory tonight the promises of God oh, my Lord I could go on and on and on and on but God has given us and raised us up tonight to be seated together in heavenly places. And that's why, that's why Michael the archangel, the angel that, that preserves, protects Israel, he is their guardian angel. My, what a job he does. What a job he does for Israel. Glory to God. I love watching watching the news and I love what the I love to see what the Palestinians and the on the Gaza Strip they shoot the rockets, they shoot their mids over to Israel. They just miss every time. They just fall on barren 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 plots. So that don't happen just by happenstance, folks. That's Michael up there diverting them rockets and diverting them bombs to go to empty fields without harm coming to God's people. Michael is doing a great job. But Michael can't say I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. He has to say the Lord. Why? Because you are in the family of God. You've been blood bought. You've been blood washed. You have been brought in. You've been redeemed. My Lord. Church, that ought to mean something to us tonight. The status. That the position. The position that God brought you out of. The sin infested life and brought you into a place of righteousness into a place of holiness and he says you're seated with me Whew, my lord victory victory tonight we're going to open up tonight we're going to open up for prayer now if somebody has a prayer that you want to pray for or pray for somebody tonight or pray intercede tonight i want to pray with you tonight it ain't going to be lengthy it ain't going to be long we're going to do simply what the word of god says What's it going to be? I want to pray for Dad. Come on. Come on. My Lord.
Amen. It ain't going to be long. This ain't going to take just a second, folks. Because the number one word is this right here. Somebody stay with me. Receive. Receive by faith because grace grace has already provided sherry grace is already sheila has already provided that my